when Tharp and I came and we oh, yes, made all do. those recordings and we published that article. Uh, so this yeah, is kind I, of like following up 25 years <laughs> later. I have the article still. <laughs> yeah, somebody told me that, uh, that uh, they knew you had it. Mm -hmm. um, I tell you, I'd like to start by asking you about this. Um, you, I, I often hear you say, when I was teaching at UCLA, mm -hmm. and I notice a lot of times people ask you, well, were you a teacher as well as a coach? Coach? So I was wondering if you would just tell, tell me, wh what does that mean when you say, I was teaching at UCLA, and you don't say, I was coaching at UCLA? Well, if you're just coaching, I think it's different from actual teaching. Uh, and I felt that I was always a teacher. I think I've followed the laws of learning in basketball or baseball or tennis or whatever I taught as far as sports was concerned through the years as much as I did uh, teaching a youngster how to parse a sentence or something in English classes that I taught. I think uh, it, we get away from the fact that we're just coaching is kind of like coaxing them to do something. Teaching is just showing them how to do it and, and getting it to the point where they will do it automatically. Uh, so I, I, I always considered my teacher rather than rather than a coach, yes, and uh, tried to try to by example teach by example too, and I, I think that's very important. I, way back in the mid '30s, I picked up something, and I, I still don't know who it was. You might know who wrote it. That, that, uh, no written word, no spoken plea can teach our youth what they should be nor all the books on all the shelves. It's what the teachers are themselves. That made an impression on me in the middle 30s. And I never forgot it. Can you t say a little bit more about the impression it made on you? Just Well, it, I think it made me uh, feel that my actions away from the basketball court or tennis court or baseball diamond was important and I must be consistent in the things that I did. Uh, I must set an example. I must be, I mean, I, I feel that anyone in a, in a position where they're going to be in the public eye have a responsibility to conduct themselves in the proper manner. And that just helped, helped. maybe that brought it about or maybe it didn't reinforce it, I'm not sure. So you'd think, you'd give that advice to teachers. Absolutely. think about that all mm -hmm. the time. Absolutely. Now you mentioned uh, parsing a sentence. I, I know you started out as a, high school English teacher. And I taught English always uh, prior to coming to UCLA, uh, along with teaching various uh, sports. And uh, uh, there's a, certainly a, a carryover from um, teaching the youngsters. Uh, the main difference is that in uh, sports you have your physical point of view, and, um, and uh, uh, in, in the English class it's more of the mental time. There's some emotional but not as much emotional as there is in sports, and it's not physical, so. But there's a correlation on the way you teach them and get them to, uh, to learn what you're trying to get across to them, regardless of what it is. So, so can you t say a little bit about how you learned to teach English? Uh, where where did, did you have teacher training, or did somebody influence you? Or? Well, I think anything I know or ever know, I got from somebody else. I can never tell you exactly where it came from, but I don't think I ever learned. I don't think I came up with the original things. I think whatever I did, I, I learned from somebody else. Uh, uh, I know in, in, <coughs> I've, I've loved poetry, and I think that I got the idea of poetry from uh, my father originally, uh, when I was in grade school, the night uh, reading poetry, uh, he, he read scriptures and poetry to us almost every night. And I can still remember my call all lamp. But I think that instilled a sort of a love of poetry, which I've always had. And um, um, then uh, I don't know, years, years later, when I became a teacher, after graduating uh, from college and uh, and uh, becoming a teacher. Although I, I, although I have said I think everyone's a teacher, everyone, everyone is a teacher. When I when I speak at groups, I say everyone is a teacher to someone. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's someone under your supervision in some other way. And in one way or another, you're teaching them by your actions. And and I think maybe that part about it came from somewhat of this particular verse that I'd picked up in the in in, in the thirties, but. Um, uh, um, I know uh, 
you just don't throw material out for someone to get, as I've heard some college professors to say. I, I had a discussion with a college uh, professor at UCLA, uh, an English uh, professor, when we were both asked to go to uh, Sacramento for a certain thing by uh, uh, Dr. Murphy. Franklin Murphy was the uh, chancellor at UCLA at the time. And um, my discussion was that he indicated that he was there to dispense material there to get it. And I said, I thought you were there to teach him. No, no, college students should be getting them themselves. Maybe in the lower, lower uh, levels, he said, you, you taught. And I said, well, I think you're always teaching. I can still remember having that discussion, very nice amiable discussion about it, but we just differed a little bit on uh, our philosophy of it. Now, when you were teaching in high school, did, did you have a particular method or approach to preparing a lesson? I, I can't say that I had any, any, any particular method. I just being prepared. I had to be prepared to keep ahead of them. Uh, and, uh, um, but uh, I think I learned little things that helped help me as I went along. Uh, I, 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 first, I just expected him to get them, much like the professor from Lucy L.A. I've, I've been given him information, expect him to get it. And I learned that you've got to teach him, you've got to break it down a little bit and go over the things a little bit and a little bit differently. And I, I think I learned that. Uh, uh, but I, I wouldn't call that a particular method. It's just sort of uh, following the laws of learning. Now, it was... Um, um did, did you mentioned that there's some overlap between teaching and coaching? Can you say a little bit about how your classroom teaching experiences affected the way you coached? Uh, preparation, I think, uh, it taught me to have better lesson plans for uh, for uh, for uh, teaching sports. Uh, I know at the beginning I didn't have a written lesson plan that I would call. I just sort of pick things up and I know some things I'm going to do and I'm going to do this and I'll work them out the times. Well, I think that, that uh, I learned to have a definite plan what we're going to do each minute. And by the time I came to UCLA, now I'd already been teaching for 13 years before then, that, that I could tell you and, and up until a few years ago, I've given them away since, but I could have told you what we did every minute of practice in my 27 years at UCLA. I could go back to the 48, 49 year and tell you what we did on November the 15th or, or the exact minute by minute what we did. And I think that helped me tremendously by doing those. And I can refer back always. Uh, I would always make little notations following each practice of maybe too long, a couple minutes or five minutes too long on this or need a little more attention to this and something. And how's the season progressed, how you'd had to make changes and things like that. I think I learned a lot and I think <coughs> I think I'd, uh, I'd learned that from knowing that I had to have a lesson plan for my classes uh, to, to, so we won't waste the time in class no matter what we might, whether I'm, I'm, I'm having, whether I'm maybe the tale of two cities or, or, or Macbeth or, or just uh, composition or something. You had, I had to have some, some organization of what I was going to do in order to save time and get things across. Now, in your planning, did you also include accommodations to individual students and players? Did that figure in, or did you have one plan for everybody? Well, I had one plan, but I had to make adjustments according to different individuals. Uh, 